In Creole Parametric, you can configure a wide variety of section views on drawings. In this video, we will take a look at full, half, local, and full and local section views. In the next video, we will take a look at full aligned and full unfolded cross sections. Let's start off by creating our cross sections, and I'm going to do that in the model. I highly recommend that you create your cross sections in the model. It's much easier than doing it in the drawing. And I'm going to start off by selecting one of the planes that I want to use. I happen to know that I want to use this default datum plane for one of my sections. Then I can go to the section drop down and choose planar. And there I have my cross section. Let's configure that we want to display hatching. And then go to the properties tab. And this one is going to be cross section A. That's good. I can hit the check mark. And now I'm going to right click on it so I can edit the hatching. I will select this component and I like my cross hatching to be a lot denser. So I'm going to have the spacing for that component and then do the same for the other component. Let me hit the apply button. I forgot to hit apply for this first one over here. So let me have it a few times and then hit the apply and OK. And that way I've got my hatching modified. Now let's right click and deactivate the section and also turn off the display of the hatching itself. For the next section that I'm going to create, I will go to the section command in planar. I'm going to pick this surface over here. Let me go to my left view and I'm going to drag this out through here and I'm just going to eyeball it. I want it sort of like in the middle between those uh, two areas. It's going to be a value of 225. That's good. Let's turn on the display of the hatching once again. And I'll go to the properties tab and let's call this one B and hit the enter key and then hit the check mark. And I take a look at the hatching. Yeah, I want to edit the hatching again. So let's right click, use the edit hatching icon. Let's pick this component and again, make it a little denser in there. Hit the apply button and do the same thing for this other component. That's good. Apply and OK. I no longer need to see this one. And so once again, I will deactivate the section and hide the hatching. I'm going to create one more cross section in here and I want it to be right in the middle of this feature over here. So I'm actually going to create a datum plane. I'll create the datum plane. I'll select this surface over here. Oh, actually that's the wrong surface. Let me remove that one. Let me pick this surface. That one I selected was curved. I'll hold down the control key, select this one and I am getting a mid plane that is good let me go to the properties tab and I'll call this my mid plane for section C click the OK button and now with that plane still selected I will create another planar section let's turn on the hatching once more go to the properties tab and I'm gonna rename this to section C and hit the check mark let me once more modify the hatching. And again, I'll just pick the components directly and make it denser. And let's also do it for this component over here. There we go, that's good. And I like what I've created in there. All right, no longer need my datum planes. Now let's start off a drawing right after I deactivate and turn off the display of the hatching there. Okay, let's create a drawing. I'll go to File, New, change the radio button to Drawing. Normally I would change the name, but I'm not going to in this case. I'm just going to uncheck Use Default Template because I'm just going to use my standard drawing format. I've got the right default model. Let's click the OK button. Let's use Sheet 1. And it wants to know the name for drawn by. I'm just going to hit the Enter key. So now we have the drawing started out. Let's create a general view. I'll hold down the right mouse button and then choose General View. I'm going to do it with no combined state. 
And let's drop it right about over here. I happen to know that the left view is one that I want to use. Let's go to, let me call this one my front view. Even though it's technically the left view, I want to call that one the front view. Let's go to the view display, and I'm going to change this one to, we want hidden line removal for quilts. Let's hit the apply button. That's good. Let's see what else do I want to do over here. Let's go to the scale. Right now the scale is 0.143. Let's change this to 0.25. Hit the enter key and then apply. And that is good so far. Now I will click the OK button for this one. Let's go to the layers. I'm just going to hide all my layers. I'm seeing a bunch of geometry that I don't want to see. So now I've got the view looking the way that I want. And I don't need to see the scale on the screen. While I'm at it, let me double click on the scale in the lower left hand corner because I know that I want to use that scale for any subsequent views. So there I have my first view on here. And I'm, I placed this view on here so I can have some different arrows showing up in here as well. Let's click on the view and then from the mini toolbar I can create some other additional projection views. And let's create a view out to the side as well. And this is the first view that I'm going to use in order to have some different sections placed in it. And let's reposition the views a little bit. Just space them out. Just get a little bit of room in here. So that is good. To apply a section to this particular view, I will double click on it, which will bring open the Drawing View Properties dialog box. Uh, let me call this my side view. I like to rename my views. That way when I'm accessing them in here, it's a little easier to tell which is which. And now I will go to the sections category. Right now it has no section. I'll click the radio button to add a 2D section. Then I'll use the plus sign over here. And you'll notice that there are three sections listed based on the ones that I created in the model. Right now, A has a red X next to it, which means that it's not appropriate to put cross-section A in this particular view. That's one of the reasons why I created it, just to show you that it'll let you know when you can or cannot use a particular section. Let's select section B for this one. And right now, the sectioned area is full. There are no references or boundaries that are needed. If I hit the Apply button, you can see the section that is in here. One way that you can get your section arrows is by clicking in this collector for arrow display and then picking the view that you want them to be in and then hit the apply button. That way I have my section arrows appearing in here. So that's good for the first one. Let's click the OK button and I'm going to select this. I'm going to readjust the display of the cutting arrows grab my note down here and then just drag it to a more appropriate place. And so that is the first one in here. Now let's duplicate that again. I'm going to select this view and do a projection and put another one out over here. Once again, I am going to go to, let's change the name, let's call this one side two. And now I'm gonna to go to sections, 2D section, hit the plus sign and I'm gonna do the same B section as before. Let's hit the apply button. And right now it looks exactly the same. Let's take a look at the difference between total edge visibility and area edge visibility. So the first one over here is total visibility, which means that you're going to see the geometry at your cross section plus all the geometry behind your cutting plane. If I go to an area section and hit the apply button, you're only going to see the geometry at your section. You're not going to see the geometry behind it. So let's click the OK button and grab this little note over here. So again, these two views that I have created, they are the same projection view with the same cross section, but the one over here on the left, this one is an, a total cross section and the one on the right is an area cross section. 
Uh, let's see, while I'm at it, I don't think I need to see my navigator at all. Let's give some more space over here and let's create another projection view and this time we will do a half view. So let's select this, do a projection view and I'll drag it off the sheet a little bit over here and let me double click on the view to bring up the drawing view properties dialog box. Rename my views again. And let's go to the Sections tab, and I'm going to do a 2D section. I'll hit the plus sign, and once again, I will use Section B in here. But this time, instead of using a full view, I'm going to choose a half view. And with the half view, you're going to select a reference plane, a datum plane. Let me go back and bring back my model tree. I happen to know that the Y plane goes right through the middle over here. And there is an arrow pointing in the direction that you're going to get the section. If I click on the other side, you can flip which side that it's going to use for the section or not. Let's use the side over to the right, and I will click the Apply button. And that way you see that it is sectioning on one side of the datum plane and not on the other. And in this situation, I might say, hey, you know what, maybe instead of Section B, I want to use Section C instead and hit the Apply button. And now we're using the C cross section, which goes through one of those uh, little legs down over there. So that's good for this particular view. Again, that one was a half section. Now let's take a look at a local section. And for this one, I'm going to put it up over here. Let's create a general view. No combined state over here. And let's use the front view. That is good. And I will go to the sections category again. Let's do a 2D section. And I'm going to hit the plus sign and then choose section B again. And this time, in actually, let's do section C. I'll do section C. And for this one, instead of doing a full section, we can do a local section. And for the local section, it's asking me to select a reference point, and then you're going to sketch a spline around that reference point. So there's my reference point. Let's start using a bunch of left mouse clicks to do a spline. And then all you have to do when you want to close it off is hit the middle mouse button. And there we have our area over there. Ah, a little ugly. I could redefine it later on. If I go inside of here, here's where you can change your point reference. And I could say, hey, maybe I want the point to be down over here. And then it will shift the boundary appropriately. If you want to redo the boundary, you can double click inside of here. And you can say, hey, let's do the boundary. And then middle mouse button. And there's my new boundary. I'll hit the apply button. And now we just have a local cross section created in this particular view. And the last one, oh, let me grab the section notes. Actually, let me grab the view and drag it. By the way, if you don't see the drag handles to move the view, this button over here allows you to toggle whether you are having view movement locked or not. Let me grab this little note over here and then drag it closer there. So we have section CC. And the very last one that I am going to do is going to use both a full and a local section. So let's go to another general view, click the OK button, drop it out over here. Let's use the front view. And I'm just going to click the OK button out of here so I can reposition it. Just get it off of my revision block up there. And once again, I can double click on the view. Let's go to sections. I'm going to do a 2D section. And let's start off with view B as a full section. And then click the apply button. And now I'm going to hit the plus sign to add in a second cross section. When I hit the plus sign, I can now say, hey, let's do a local section with section C. This was automatically set to local. You can only have one full section view in a drawing view. And once again, we are going to select a reference point and then sketch a spline around that reference point. 
bunch of left mouse clicks and then close it off with a middle mouse button. I can click the apply button. And so that way you can see that, hey, this particular uh, valve over here is, or valve cover component geometry, whatever, uh, does not have the section applied, but this one on the right does have it apply, applied to it. Let me click to display the arrows in a particular view. So I'm going to click over here in this collector and say, hey, let's display the arrows in this particular view. And when I click the apply button, there we get the B arrows in there. I'll click the OK button to show you an alternative way of doing it. You can also select the view, right mouse click and hold and choose add arrows. And I'll pick this view over here. And that way I get the C arrows in there as well. So now let's do a little bit of adjustment. Grab these and drag them over here. And grab this one a little better. There we go. And so that way you can see the B cutting arrows and C cutting arrows for this particular view. Let me grab the label and move it down over there. Uh, one other thing that I want to point out, again, you can double click on your different views. If I go back to the section tab over here, we've got the different cross sections in here. And you'll notice that depending on what combination I use, in this case here, full and local, I don't have the choice between doing a total or an area section. Same thing for this particular view. Again, if I go to sections over here, because this is a local section, you can't toggle between total or area. And this view over here, this one is a full one, so you do have the ability to toggle. Uh, let's see if I go to, let's click OK out of there. Double click on this one, sections. Uh, this one, the difference between the two is that, oh yeah, we did change between total and area on that one. And this one over here with the half section, again, you don't have the choice of doing total or area. Again, pretty much if only the full 2D section allows you to change between doing a total cross section or an area cross section. So there you see a variety of different cross sections created for 2D sections in here. In the next video, we will take a look at the full aligned and full unfolded cross sections. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.